Okay, so <clears throat> I was listening to a song a few weeks ago. Um, it's by a band called Oppenheimer Analysis, Devil's Dancers. I don't know if you've heard of it, probably not. Uh, 80s, Cold War inspired sort of song. And there's this line in the beginning. So it goes, the future is here, said the pioneer. There's room at the top, get up, get up. So it's not exactly that, I changed it a little bit. <clears throat> and I realized this is a good quote for the machine learning community in Gothenburg right now. I think this summarizes sort of my feeling of where we are. And also this conference is sort of affirming that statement that <clears throat> we have the pioneers and we have a lot of pioneering companies in Gothenburg. So I'm not only talking about people on the other side of the ocean. Uh, there's a lot of pioneers here. But there's also a lot of us that don't feel like pioneers. I mean, we're struggling with delivering CSVs and we sort of, we have no experimentation culture, we have no experimentation platform, we have no models in production. I mean, the pioneers are somewhere, someone else. Um, but the thing that the pioneers tells us is that the future is here. I mean, and I'm going to s tell you why that, the proof for that. <clears throat> and then there's the second statement here, that the, the, there is room at the top. And that means that, I mean, the future is not exclusively for the pioneers or the people on the other side of the ocean or those fancy companies that have hundreds and thousands of GPUs or whatever. There's actually possibility for every company to get up there and do almost the same thing as they are. And I'm going to give two examples of that. <clears throat> but the way there to the top is a little bit like optimizing your network. And that's why I have this... Uh, stochastic gradient ascent picture here that, in this case we want to get to the bottom, but it's just inverted, so it works. But um, the way there, it can be tough. Uh, you, you, yeah, you're moving there slowly, uh, batch by batch, epoch by epoch, but we know that we can get there eventually. And we started this journey, I mean, Gaia started this journey five years ago, and machine learning in general, I mean, has been around for a long time, but we're slowly getting to the top. So, and I think <clears throat> what we're doing in Gothenburg, and I, this conference is to a large extent just showing and inspire people in the city what we can do, and uh, yeah, what has been done. And I'm just posted a few things that, I mean, from newspapers this year, or last year, but what's happening in the city. So the pioneers are actually also here. Um, with uh, with Sensact and Volvo Cars and uh, I mean AI Sweden and ESA, the space collaboration and, and uh, yeah, Anotel is mentioned up there to the right. Um, so there's a lot of like pioneering stuff happening here, and it's I mean, we, sh we sh really should be proud of what's going on. Um, I mentioned Klarna as well. We had Anil talking about that, and the reason why we sort of felt that was a good idea because as a uh, thank you note, maybe, <laughs> for coming here and stealing all the engineers that already have jobs. <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> so the, the thing about pioneers is that, I mean, we have them here. We definitely have them here. And there's a lot of, I mean, state of the art things going on in this city. And that's super cool to see. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, the pioneers, wh whoever they may be, I mean, it's completely subjective in some sense, but we sort of, we have the feeling in the back of our heads that, oh, we don't have the ability to build the most complex models, and we don't have the ability to train all those fancy networks or deploying those models or build that MLOps platform or whatever it can be. But I mean, the point is something else, I would say, that the pioneers are there to inspire us and show us what the future might look like. So the future is here, said the pioneer. So that's a word of inspiration, not of bragging or showing off and telling you that you cannot do that. So the point is that the future does not belong to the pioneer. Um, and the sort of 
I call it democratization of ML. I think it's a little bit of a cliche, but the fact that we actually have these frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Scikit-Learn, everything out there that can make us build these models, or the open source MLOps frameworks and so on, that actually has, I mean, you're handed the plate of, okay, now you go on and build that, whatever you, wh whoever you may be. Right. Uh, and, I mean, I have two cases from talks today that I think sort of highlights this fact as an inspiration. So I'm stealing some, some slides here from some people in the audience. I hope that's okay. But basically, <clears throat> one thing I'm stealing that I think is really cool is uh, the thing that Niklas was talking about in the other hall. Basically, where you have this sort of old school organization like Sjöfartsverket. You would say that, okay, they're probably a lot of like rusty old guys that think that things are written in stone and it was always better the way it was before and uh, the future is not for us, I want to go home. <clears throat> but actually, uh, they have a need for machine learning or AI or whatever we want to call it. And we can take sort of something that would be considered work of, for the pioneers, like the Facebook wave to vec 2 model, let's say. And just because of they have been doing that work before, and maybe publishing the pre-trained network or something like that, I mean, you can just go out and take it. So there's room at the top, even for Sjöfartsverk, it can be at the top and do something sort of like state of the art that would be sort of... I mean, I, to me, this is amazing that, like, it's definitely not the exclusive club of the big, big companies to be able to do that. I have another example, which I like as well, that we talked about today, which is Vestrafik, how they predicted crowded uh, traffic, which is also some of these, I mean, forgive me, Eric, but maybe a little bit more organization wouldn't be thinking is so techy, uh, but that is actually able in a short time, six months, to put the machine learning model in production, and put that in an app and actually help people. So it was a light GBM and we can all discuss how fancy that is, but it's still, I mean, the state of the art machine learning solution that they put in production and actually in, in a classical organization. So light GBM was something that was built by Microsoft uh, the sort of maybe pioneer, but they told you the future is here and there's room at the top. So also an organization like Vestrafik can just go up there and start using it and put it in production and suddenly you have something state of the art. I mean, that would not have been possible five years ago. Which is when we started this conference, which is... <laughs> uh, so, the, I mean, there's a huge difference, I would say. Yeah, exactly. So 2018, when we had the first conference, it's been much smaller, much more amateurish, but still, I think, a success. But the community was new. I mean, there was not a lot of people in Gothenburg working on machine learning. And uh, everybody was getting into it. I mean, you didn't have any models in production. You didn't know how to put them in production. You didn't know, I mean, uh, should we use R or Python? Um, there was a lot of stuff, but the hype was real. There was still the pioneer somewhere out there telling you this is how, it was, how to do it, but the future was not here yet. Um, and now in 2022, we can really see that AI, ML, data science is here to create value. And it's the, we, we have passed the hype, and we're actually now, it's just a matter of execution. You just need to go out there and build stuff. There's no impediments anymore. So I'm um, not really true, but yeah, there's a lot of impediments. And Claire talked about one of the biggest impediments, uh, the culture. But technically, I mean, there's pre-trained models you can just pull off the internet and you have the open source frameworks. There's, I mean, from an engineering perspective, we have a lot of framing and tooling in place just to start executing, um, which is really cool to see. Okay, 
that was basically my closing remark to build some injection into the community. And just a point here is that we should not forget also what Ulle was talking about this morning, that we can be a little bit too tech optimistic and we should consider the consequences of what we are building. But I want to end on a positive note and just seeing all the good things that we can do. Um, so, uh, next year it will be the fifth conference, five year anniversary. Uh, so, I hope to see you there. And thank you, and hope that you enjoyed the day. Mm -hmm.